How are you doing? My name is Liam O'Sullivan and welcome to The Head Mechanic, the home of plain speaking positivity. What does that mean? Well, if you give me a couple of minutes of your time, I'll explain. These days, I work as a cognitive hypnotherapist and life coach, which basically means my working day is spent helping people overcome self-limiting beliefs, problem behaviours, etc. Basically changing their lives for the better. It's a great job and I love it. However, I also spent 25 years of my working life working on building sites and in pubs, which means that my life experience and my background is substantially different to that of the vast majority of my professional colleagues. What difference does this make? Well, over the last five years or so, throughout my training and, and, and my, my first years in practice, I've come across some absolutely brilliant, life-changing techniques, strategies, insights, you know, ways of changing people's behaviour, a way of helping people fulfil the potential. The challenge in, in this was that um, when I was discussing this with our workmates, after a couple of minutes or even after a few seconds, I would see their eyes glazing over. You know, I still sort of go, whoosh, over their head. And they say things like, you swallowed a dictionary or what? So there's a problem, a challenge in the language. What was needed then was a translation from the language of the, the lecture hall, of the, the seminar, a way of getting this stuff across without the psycho babble and the jargon that often comes with it, to put it to plain language. So that's where the idea of the head mechanic came from. Now I served my apprenticeship with this, writing there a column called The Head Examiner for my local paper, which was called The Examiner. Um, and that was like, you know, that was where I had to learn the right, the craft, to earn my spurs, to serve my time doing this and trying it out. Because believe you me, the area I live in would <laughs> would still be the natural hunting ground of therapists, of alternative therapists, by any stretch of the imagination. Right? Now I hope that the head mechanic will be different to anything else that's out there. It's about plain speaking positivity. Now when I say plain, plain speaking positivity, that's about using plain language. But let's be very, very clear about this. When I say plain language, I don't mean that this is for stupid people. Because people who work on building sites, in factories, in pubs, in shops. They're not daft. You're not daft. Right? They just use plain language. They conduct their lives in plain language. They like plain speaking. So, I thought just for a change, instead of having them having to learn on this new language so they can engage with this stuff, wouldn't it be an idea if just for once this stuff was translated into plain language? Now, some people in the industry maintain that they need all this jargon. Well, they do if they're talking amongst themselves, but if they want to bring it to, to plain ordinary people, then they have to change their language. Um, as my star witness for my case, I'll call Albert Einstein, who's a bit of an all-around clever geezer. Einstein said very, very clearly, if you can't explain sim something simply, you don't understand it well enough yourself. Now, if any of that mob want to argue with Einstein, they're welcome to. So what we've got, we've got this thing of the psychobabble, psycho can't even say it now, and the jargon. And it needs translated. And why should, um, why should we have to learn a new language to access it? So as I say, 25 years spent on building sites, I'm well able to converse in the site language of the site, just the way I am able to converse with professional colleagues. Um, most of my colleagues obviously wouldn't have set foot on a building site unless maybe they work for a few weeks on one in their summer holidays from university. Now that's not a criticism, that's just a fact, you know, the way it is. Um, it doesn't make me any better than the minor, but it does mean that there aren't too many people you see with a foot in each camp who've done professional training, but have also come from a, a manual trade background. So that leaves me pretty much uniquely placed to deliver this service, the head mechanic, to, to translate stuff into plain language. Um, because I say, there still exists that gap, that quantum leap. You know, it's almost like um, if, you're, if you're a working class guy and you want to engage with this stuff, you have to change everything to go and engage with it. Well, you, you don't need to. That's the idea of the head mechanic, is to bring this and translate it into normal language. Now, I think that it should be the industry that changes, not the people. But the problem isn't just the use of technical language. There's, there's also another thing, where, you know, there's a, there's a perceptual problem. A lot of people, when you mention um, positive psychology, positive thinking, all that kind of carry on, right? Life coaching. 
Loads of people have this image right, of, of crystal, uh, new age hippies with crystals and hugging trees and having group hugs and chanting and stuff. Now look, I know lots of people are into that new age stuff and the spiritual stuff. There's nothing wrong with them at all and there's nothing, they're lovely people. However, it doesn't speak to me and the people I come from. So, as I say, I'm looking for something that will speak to my own constituency. Nor will you get here any of that, um, you know, that rah, rah, happy, clappy, yes, you too could change your life and be a fantastic success, just like me, by unleashing the beast within. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, you won't get any of that. Look, Tony Robbins makes millions and millions of dollars a year doing that. Right? He does it very, very well and he delivers it to his constituency, to people it appeals to. The people that this is aimed at, that kind of carry-on doesn't appeal to them. And then there's one that brings us nicely to the final issue, the most thorny of all. <laughs> Very much the most thorny of all, right? That's the one of worthiness. What is it about some people that at the very moment that they have something worthwhile to say, they become so hard to listen to? You've met them. Reformed smokers, reformed drinkers, uh, people who are once heavily overweight and now survive on two letters leaves a day and want to tell you how to do it. People who want to run your life. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like being told what to do. I've never responded well to that, which is probably why I ended up working on building sites. But the thing is, once you start preaching at people, they close their ears. This isn't school. You're not the teacher. You know, this is an adult-to-adult -adult conversation. So if you want people to listen to you, you have to find a way to engage with them. You have to make an effort to engage with them, to show them some due respect and consideration. That's what I'm trying to do here. Because, um, you know, why does it have to be so pro-faced and worthy? What's wrong with having a bit of crack? You know, you go to work, especially if you're working a hard job. You know, that, that thing of the, the crack at dinner time with your workmates and all, that's what makes the job worth doing or bearable. You know, when you go out of a night time, do you choose to sit around discussing world affairs and the state of the economy? Why do you go out and have a bit of crack? I know what I prefer to do. So hopefully we'll be doing this with a smile on our faces. I'll be doing it with a smile on mine and hopefully bring a smile to yours as well. Now as I say, I served my apprenticeship doing this right from my local paper. Did 18 months there, 800 words a week for 18 months. I've moved on to another paper now, but it's time I brought this to a wider audience, to the internet. Um, I had to say apprenticeship is important to me because um, it's important when you start doing this to learn to take a bit of criticism. So, look, what you're seeing and what you'll be watching on these videos um, is the fruits of this labour of love that I've been involved in for the last number of years. Right? If you've got any comments and feedback, there's, there's comment boxes below here. Please, write, write a comment in there, let me know how I'm getting. I don't know how this is going to be received, I can only guess. Now, I've done, as I say, I've served my apprenticeship, so I think I've got the pitch pretty much uh, okay, now often I'll hope that um, I will hit the nail firmly on the head when I, when I do these pieces to camera. Sometimes I'll aim and I'll miss by a country mile. If that happens, please let me know. Um, so there you have it. If you like what I'm doing, you like what I've got to say, please tell all your friends and have them come and visit us at the, the Head Mechanic. Um, if you hate what I'm doing, then please just keep your big mouth shut. No, seriously. If you've got something to write, critical, I know what, I'm a big boy, I can take criticism. Now, if it's abuse, I can take that as well, but I'm not going to take much notice of it, am I? And to give you an idea of how uh, once you start writing and putting stuff out to the public arena, even in a small little community like mine, I went to my local pub a few weeks after I started my column. And uh, I've met several people, and, you know, people have started coming up to me in the street and saying, hey, isn't it great to be alive? Because that's just the words I started each column with. Isn't it great to be alive? It got to this stage eventually, of course, where I couldn't go anywhere locally and be miserable. You know, I couldn't go out and have a whinge for myself because people just say to me, ah, isn't it great to be alive? And I, and, you know, I walked into the pub, in, a bit of a music session on, and up and called a pint. And from the corner, I heard this voice that said, Leave old Sullivan! What's that hell shaped you to be putting into the wee paper? Yes, one of our village M characters actually took him to me. And she went on and on and on. And several people, you know, made witty comments and gave her an out. 
you know, that was enough. And she went on and on and on, and the middle room fell silent, the back room fell silent, and the bar fell silent. And all you could hear was, Did you ever read such a load of old shit in all your life? And you could hear the glass washer. <laughs> and I, I won't say it now, I just said, You know what? My job is to put a smile on your face. Whether you're laughing with me or you're laughing at me really doesn't matter to me. So if you've got any comments, please put them in the boxes below. Uh, let me know because you are literally the only people who can let me know if I'm getting this right or not. So there you go. That's the head mechanic. Thank you for your time. Thanks for listening.